So the electricians finished up yesterday and I'm really pleased to say that we now have lighting, power, three phase to all the barns over there. Like everything is moving in the right direction now. While James and Sean finished drilling those last few cores, that's basically to bring three phase through to all of our trenches from the other end of the farm. Uh, I'm gonna get the cabin all ready and prepped. This is a few bits. Well, there's a lot of bits to do in here today. Plus the heat is on, which is never a bad thing. I just heard that our patio doors are on the way as well. So it's all going on today. What I wanna do is get some just support batons in here where the light fixings are going to fix to the ceiling. And rather than putting the whole section in here, it's only a single pendant. We'll put it here, two screws, and we're at the X marks the spot. Pretty sure I could hang off that. Still waiting on a couple of bits, like the big cable, but a lot of second fixes done. And the three phase bit in the barn, slash plant room, is taking shape. Well, that looks pretty uh, industrial, doesn't it? Have you ever worked in a pig shed before? Yeah. <laughs> and what's this bit? That's Paxilin. So that is a non conductive material. Oh, so I see two bits. Yeah. Yeah, and also what you do is you cut the metal bigger than the paxilin, so when the cable comes through it, the cable can't rub against the metal edge. Oh, it's like a gland in itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. James was explaining to me earlier, basically every time you put another board or uh, distribute power from one place to the next, it needs to be stepped down. It, you know, it can't be the same or more uh, the breaker this is. So there's three 100 amp phases in the stone barn. They are now 80 in there. Uh, so there's 80, three, uh, 80 amp phases to make up the three phase. And then one of those phases is going to come across and supply the cabin. But that will be 64 or 60 odd um, amp. So basically, it just means that if one thing goes, it's the first thing. Not all the way back to the beginning, I guess. Anyway, 60 amps in a caravan is just about right. All right, cables here. Just lift it up for the tractor. Only problem is I took the measurements. It's all my fault if it was wrong. Right. So like the one we've laid back in the spring, they're both gonna get trenched across here at some point. The three phase one came on this drum and what the guys have done is just wound it out. It doesn't look too bad, but I guess we haven't turned any tight corners yet, but that's all wound out. And then I've just taken around on the forks, the. 25, uh, 35, 30 mil, something like that, for the cabin. Pretty good. Good, good. Success, none of the cables were too short. If anything, the other one's a little bit long, but that's perfect because we can leave it under the chassis and then in years to come, when the cabin's gone, we can reuse that and it'll be a 90 meter length of cable. Another day, another icy day. Joe's busy defrosting water. Um, we still got the digger, so let's plow on or dig on. Managed to fill in most of the slope yesterday, but I'll tidy that up when I get a chance. But while we got it and it's defrosting, I really want to get this trench over here filled in. Let me give you a bit of an update on that, show you what we've got to do. So this is the trench where the three phase cable comes across, as you'll probably see in a different video. 
and it's uh, it's probably about 800 deep, deeper over there, and then it comes up and into the wall. Even with the digger, this is going to be pretty tricky. Rock solid. We've got sandy soil here anyway, basically sand. But I'm going to put a bag of sand uh, or bags of sand around that cable as well, and then back for a little bit, and then Joe's picked up the other new roll of this because um, we only had a short section for the other bit this is basically going to be put in a layer above our cable so if someone was digging here in the future they come across this before our cable in reality that cable is obviously armored anyway so it's pretty yeah, it's going to stand up to a lot of abuse but we don't want that this will probably be re jigged in the future and put all underground but I'm going to bring it up and over ground over there and clip it to the wall where it comes up, I just need to try and get it a little bit more of an angle so when we backfill it, it's kind of at 90. Oh no, it's not too bad. So we are 600 there and then it drops. But all of this is probably going to end up slightly higher once it's tidied up anyway. So I think that's okay. Not the straightest trench, is it? Right, as promised, the electricians are back today, finishing off, and we should have power in here very, very soon. So the three phases being worked on, that's coming into the barn. Then we've got the other cable, which comes all the way around and into the cabin. Lights have got to be done at this end. Last few bits of the second fix have arrived. But far more important than that, the fire pit's hot, the sausages are ready to go on. It's lunchtime. And that, as they say, is a wrap. Almost a wrap for 2022. So the electricians finished up yesterday and I'm really pleased to say that we now have lighting, power, three phase to all the barns over there. Like everything is moving in the right direction now. Uh, we also got the patio doors in yesterday. Dad and I did that. So that will be a separate video uh, because we also finished off the windows, the ceiling and the taping. Um, so that's quite an a interesting one. There's a couple of different options there. But let me give you a bit of a walk through the cabin. No one's seen this yet, uh, not even the girls. So uh, we'll start in the bedrooms. I mean, all the bedrooms are very similar, but they're all wired up. So these are the switches we went for. They are Click Deco, I think they're called. Um, really nice finish, so pleased with those. And that one in the corner is a radiator. I'll show you that in a second. A few spare over here for the radi towel radiator in the bathroom and some more sockets and lighting. We've got a two-way lighting for the hallway coming down here. Bathroom lights up. Uh, of course, pull switch was the better option for now. Um, we can't put a switch. Conventionally, you'd have your switch here, but that crosses the two halves. So from a wiring perspective it's just easy to have a pull switch so these are the ones ready for the radiator which will go in the middle of the wall there and they uh for the flex and in between here and the radiator we're going to have a smart unit we're going to do a video using some smart controls and they all connect together so there'll be a little device on the wall here same again with this room almost a mirror image of the other side which for the hallway and then we've fallen behind on this room however i will be getting this boarded this wall here has got all the feeds for the appliances the other side. Fridge freezer, oven and induction. Small toilet in there, showing up the bad plastering. And then fans have all got to go in still. So I say it's done, it's not done. Uh, we've got a day in January to pencil in for getting all the final, final stuff done. Outdoor lights, appliances and fans and the MVHR units. This is for the main living room. So we've got lounge, dining room, kitchen, and the island. 
We're going to hold off wiring the pendants above the breakfast bar simply because it makes sense to get the ceiling in and then the beams in and then hang it off there. And then as you can see, we haven't yet decided on a kitchen light. Probably will need to be a bar with some spots just to light the whole area. Um, so I'll just put a plastic pendant up there for now. And that is this end lit and powered. So we've got double sockets everywhere. Uh, the USB one's quite nice. So they have the normal USB, but also USB-C, which is quite cool. And we've done a few of those, maybe six. Uh, I'll show you the charging station because it's one of the most important parts of the building, right? Where you charge everything, especially if you've got tools and torches and headlamps and all sorts of stuff, especially in, on a farm we're going to be using. And um, we use walkie-talkies quite a lot. We're in the utility, this laundry area. We're going to have a little desk here, probably not for doing too much work at, but mainly for a charging station. So we've got two of the USB ones, four sockets in the middle, and this will be where we put all that stuff. I didn't do too much filming. Uh, the first two days that they were here, it was minus eight or something, and I was using the mini digger to try and dig the trenches ahead of them. Uh, and it was just, it was hard work, so it was all frozen. Plus I was trying to get other bits and bobs done and keep everyone fed and watered, the animals fed and watered, let alone making teas, which I fell behind on. But thank you to James and Sean um, for doing all that hard work, getting it done. I'll show you uh, the more commercial side of it. The cable that supplies the cabin goes underground here, comes up there, and then it's got to be clipped to those posts all the way around. We'll put a board along the bottom. So this has got to be backfilled again still and then graded up, but it's leaving us about 700 deep uh, down to here. This is the cable that comes across this. So this is supplying the cabin only, 90 meters there, through into the barn. One thing we weren't sure on is voltage drop because we've got uh, about 140 meters from where it comes in to the cabin through three phase and that um, armor cable there and it was two, four, two. <laughs> so it didn't drop at all. I don't know what it comes in at, to be honest, but it's uh, fine, we didn't have any problems there. I mean, everything's oversized anyway. So this room, room it's gonna be an agricultural store on the plan, so uh, it will be always a barn. So this is kind of where it's come in. I'm gonna board up here, just in case, we never get rain from that side really, but um, just to make sure all of this is come completely tight. So this is our income in three phase for, straight from the stone barn. Comes into here. This is where all the distribution happens. At the moment it's only going one way, but in the future it's going to be one, two, three different supplies coming out of here probably. Uh, James decided to put some sockets in here, which is going to be much needed, I'm sure. Either for charging, we use cameras when we've got, we'll probably bring the sheep in here, maybe just for lambing. Um, and electric fencing, things like that. Always always handy, um, pressure washers. So the only bit I haven't shown you is where it comes in to the old block, I can't remember what it's called, you know, the really old stuff, the old three phase. So we're gonna get all that swapped out, but that's not the electricians, that'll be the other people, the suppliers. There are no glamorous shots of it completely finished yet, but once we've got everything fitted out inside, hopefully all the lighting and everything will look really top dollar and uh, please we've spent I don't know how much more, but a little bit more just to get the nice sockets and switches. Ah, oh, beats a caravan, eh? Still a caravan. Thank you for watching. Thank you to James and Sean. I'll leave a link to their info down below. I think they're just on Instagram now. They have so much work that um, whatever I say is probably not gonna help them massively anyway, but either way, I'll put it down there, head over and check it all out. Thanks for watching. Have a good Christmas, everyone. If you haven't had one already, and we'll see you next time.